All right, we're live streaming. It's me and an empty chair that's at calgaryphotos.ca. Okay, Okay, um, Rob Morota is going to be joining me here to talk about real estate photography, and we'll talk about wherever the conversation goes. We'll wait, wait for some, hopefully some people will just join us live here. Uh, hey there. I'm sorry about that. There's, okay. So, so I'm here. Rob, since we're kind of waiting around for maybe people to jump on or watch live, yeah. I put on a collar today because I knew you were going to be on. Hey, I, I I just got out of my pajamas to put on a collar as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rob shows up in a Canadian, in a what is it? Proud to be Canadian uh, t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the good old I am Canadian t-shirt from back in the uh, uh, the the nineties. Right on. Yeah. Did I mention before that you, like, you could call me half Canadian if, officially? <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> People think I'm Canadian because I'm goofy. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so um, I know a couple other people are um, going to kind of come in and give some perspectives or some updates. But I also, okay, so this is the second time we did kind of a, let's just talk about real estate during the time of quarantine sort of talk. Mm -hmm. and the first time, I just asked a handful of people and everybody was like, yeah, 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 yeah let's do it. This time, I want to give the first update. We've got at least two guys, three guys I can think of that are out working tons of hours a day shooting property. So that's good, right? <laughs> we, <laughs> um, when when uh, Paul that was here, he says he's got like uh, all, all kinds of shoots. Um, uh, another guy from Colorado, he said he's been working 14 hour days. Yeah, like you look at you look at Paul's feed on uh, Facebook and he's just going gangbusters on this stuff, which is great. Yeah, and yeah. uh if you didn't see the no. last, if you didn't see the last show, anybody check out Paul. Um, I know I said Maynard. I think it's Min Minard. <laughs> um, spelled Maynard. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's working hard. He's doing a lot of properties in Colorado, right? I think so. Yeah. And then you know we look at my team, my team, and my team's just going gangbusters in Calgary right now as well. It's just, it's uh, it's nuts. Um, I don't know if you're feeling this, like in um where in uh where i'm from calgary calgary alberta canada oil sands area we're seeing this this uh, thing where everyone is just waiting and they're saying okay well the restrictions are going to get lifted soon there's probably going to be a rush of people that are going to sell their houses so do we start selling now do we put the listings on now and beat the crowd and get our listings on sooner you're seeing the sellers and, the sellers are doing that yeah and so we're seeing a little bit of that where people are rushing. They're, they're not really ready for the listings yet, but they want it on just before the rush hits because everyone assumes that there's going to be this big rush that's going to come. Like What's your thoughts like on that? Just like a release the hounds kind of thing when they say go? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Cause, what, uh, are, they, yeah. are they then doing things like photography now in preparation for that? Or are they holding oh, yeah. on? Okay. So that's oh, yeah. We're we're there, but the the neat thing is that how many, uh, how many is your team again? Uh, we've got we've got a team of uh, let's see now we've got two uh, two that are off right now, so we've got four that are actively working right now. Nice, yeah. that's good. Yeah, and and you're do and they're they're all busy. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's uh it's neat. Like we look at uh, we look at Calgary and Calgary's one of those places where we got hit uh, hit really hard in two fronts. Like, you know, we. Our, our industry, our province relies on oil and gas. And that is essentially the only thing that keeps, has kept Alberta alive for the last however many decades. Yeah. And now oil is trading at negative, what, $35 an oil, yeah. a barrel or something like that. Like, uh, it's ridiculous. And so there's a lot of guys that are like, oh, okay, I, I, I don't know if they're even going to have a job to go back to after COVID. So let's get out. Property that, prices are dropping. And, yeah. Uh, did I did I just get louder by the way? You did just get louder by the way. Okay, um, I, I I get comments that I'm hard to hear. A lot of it's just I don't have a good carrying voice, but also I'm trying to get the audio better. We had a comment that just said yeah, I was hard to hear, so let me know, Bruno, if that's better. And Bruno from Portugal, awesome. Can you oh, uh, wonderful can you chime in and uh, click on that Streamyard link and come on and uh, tell us some stuff? I, I love the international part of this. I mean, Canada is not really international for us. It's California and Canada, it's kind of yeah. the same thing. So, um, sorry, Rob, you're not exactly. No, no. But, <laughs> um, okay, real quick, um, just before we uh, we have, I want to say this. I want I want to say this. So it's fun. We have a call on the line. 
<laughs> um, Welcome, we, caller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I wanted to say before we start uh, a couple things. Um, first of all, um, we have Rob from CalgaryPhotos.ca. That's right. And um, we are just. And what are we doing here? Well, doing something during quarantine to sort of. I have to admit just for me, for my own kind of sanity, I'm not really working outside the house these days. Um, just my personal situation. I've done a lot of real estate photography, but I moved fairly recently and I've never really marketed again and kind of gotten into back to working in my zip code. So I'm doing a lot of work from home with the Photomatics team and with other kinds of photography that are not really real estate now. But um, yeah, well, and so for my own sanity, I thought I want to be really involved and, and like, why not, why don't we do some, some fun things on social media because the photomatics team doesn't really, we don't really have a social media uh, presence too much. So a lot, a lot of it's for fun, get people together, do that whole community building thing. And I said, Hey, can we do something else when this all started out? And then they, they agreed let's do something to offer um, this page here. Now you actually go to the hdrsoft.com homepage. There's one of those links at the top. It's pretty common these days. What are we doing for COVID-19? Yeah. And one of the things, uh, so there's a lot of information about HDR, how to get started, including a free license for Photomatics Essentials, which is the kind of the simpler app for people that are new. So go there, check it out. And if you want, if you uh, either have never done HDR, been interested, wondered about it, if it's mysterious, go check that out. That'll help you get started. And there's also... Um, chance to get using photomatics which in a way a, kind of started it all <laughs> kind of started it all for as far as hdr for photography goes so there's that wow. and um we also just started a facebook group for photomatics users and i'll figure out how to send people there i guess the best thing <laughs> is to go to go to the hdr soft uh, facebook page and um there's a I can get you on the group there i'll, I'll find a better way of pointing that out because it's brand new you can be kind of an inaugural member Okay, let's see. Okay. With all that said, let's bring on Jeff over here. I just clicked the button, and there is a Saints fan. All right. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Uh, hi, Ron. Hi, Rob. How are you guys? Real good. Uh, we're, we're now we're not three of us. This is cool. Um, so, uh, with uh, it's great just to have questions come on because, uh, and then I can kind of hold any kind of presentation for later, or if we just go with questions all day, great. <laughs> What brings you here? Well, uh, I thought I'd, uh, when I saw this advertised on Facebook, I thought I'd jump in and ask a few questions because I am I love photography and I'm a high school teacher actually in Windsor, Ontario. So, uh, but I like doing it part time. Oh, no uh, yeah. I'm outnumbered. <laughs> and uh, I, I was wondering, how did you start in real estate photography? Yeah, it's a great Rob. question. Ron, do you want to take this or do you want me to? Oh me or, right. or both of you. I don't I know. Should, I should throw sure. out. I should throw out now. I'm so used to being called Rob that <laughs> I'll answer either one. So um, in fact, oh, yeah. a lot of a lot of my life, especially my kind of mm. photography work life, I'm usually just Pepper. So you can do that <laughs> if you want nice. to keep it clear. Sure. That's, that, that's one of the reasons right there. So uh, nice. Go ahead, Rob. Why don't you start? Yeah, out? no, I'm I'm exactly the same way. You know, when you, you know, when you start using autocorrect on your phone, I, I my name turns into Ron all the time. So I get well, it. That's where mine yeah. are going. going <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, all right. Uh, so let me tell you about our, uh, how I got into this. Like, um, for me, I used to be a marketing director for a real estate developer. So I used to help make all the marketing campaigns for, you know, multi-million dollar condo buildings. And then back in 2007, eight, when the real estate marketing in uh, Canada started to drop down, I sort of found myself where I didn't actually have a portfolio to market anymore. And I decided, well, you know what? Let's write my own severance. Let's get out. And uh, 2009, I exited the market there. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But, you know, I, I had a fairly nice severance check. And, um, you know, during, uh, during the time that I was working as a marketing director, I had this guy. His name was John Sharp. It was a fantastic photographer who uh, uh, unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, but I used to hire him on for all of our uh, show homes and everything. And when he'd come, I'd say, okay, John, here's, here's the ad that we're creating. Here's a proof of what the ad is creating. So this is what I need. I need a shot that looks like this. It's straight on. It needs to have this, this, and this, and it needs to fit in here. And so he would be like, okay, Rob, 
here's the camera, place it wherever you want. <laughs> and I would, I would place it in the room, look through the viewfinder, like, okay, so this works with this. And then he set up all the lights, click, bang, it was done, it was perfect. And so after, after I you know, got, got rid of myself, I, I looked at the check and he called me up and he said, let's go for a beer. And he said, look, we're, at the, we're gonna go to a launch party. I thought, launch party, sure, great, what? The Canon 7D. And uh, that that was released in 2009, and you know he told me that I should get one. And uh, after that, it, we did a couple you know, a couple shoots together. He and uh, next thing I know, my my next door neighbor's like, "Hey, Rob, you've got a new camera. I've got a house. Can you shoot it for me?" I said, "Yeah, sure." And then, wow. of course, you shoot that. The it's realtor all, looks at it. We all start out, isn't it? <laughs> it is a camera. Word of mouth. <laughs> yep. And then the realtor looks at it and is like, "Oh, this is really good. Hey, can you do my next listing?" Sure. And then it's like, hey, I heard from, and it just word of mouth and it blew up and to the point where I think after a year, uh, I was making just as much shooting as I was uh, as a marketing director. And then after the second year, I had so much work that I, I couldn't hold on to the volume. And so um, uh, strangely, and strangely enough, a family friend said, hey, you remember that kid that you went to school with way, way back when? I said, yeah, it's like, well, he's 20 now, and here I am in my mid mid 30s, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm gonna hire around 20 year old. Sure, let's see how this goes. And quite frankly, he's been with me for the last eight years. And uh, you know, after that, somebody else came up to me and was like, hey, you know this guy? He's a great guy. You should hire him. And so hired him, and hired another guy, and kept on growing, and uh, to the point where now they're all out there shooting, and I'm doing stuff like this, <laughs> and getting my name out there be, you know, with, uh, you know, web links like this, please follow us. <laughs> all right. Did you, uh, did you begin with all, like, did you do all the editing yourself in the beginning? Yes. Cause you in did. the beginning there was no, there was no outsourcing. Um, okay. it was all in house. And unfortunately we didn't have photomatics back then. I had this thing that was called, um, uh, Oh, what was it? It was called, uh photoshop, it was a, photoshop before layers no no this was uh even before we had um God, what was it called uh it was a it was a batching program called infuse and it was this uh thing that you downloaded you ran you ran it on in terminal in mac and you had to upload all your photos to it and it would take around eight minutes per photo to, st uh, to uh, wow. go from wow. uh, three uh, three images to a HDR, so mm -hmm. it was it was terrible. And uh, Photoshop wasn't what it is uh, today, and my Photoshop skills <laughs> weren't what they were uh, back then. So um, it I remember. Did, did, uh, did you yeah, say I, Did you say your Photoshop skills have gotten less or more? Uh, a little bit better, just a little. Yeah. But the program's some, gotten a whole lot better. A lot of a lot of times, as new tools come out to do work for us, then we don't use the Photoshop muscles as much because I, I, yeah. I, I think I used to be much more, I don't know if I was ever an expert, but I knew a lot more in Photoshop and now there's so many tools to do things for us. Because, oh, the tools are great. Yeah. yeah. Are it's there probably, other specific ones you use or? Honestly, for me, the uh, for our workflow, we are predominantly, um, we use uh, the Adobe Suite. So we've got uh, Bridge, uh, Bridge, Photoshop, Lightroom, and then Photomatics, and those are the, the the key three that we use. So we so we use Bridge, where uh, Bridge is like using a, a, a Finder's window or uh, a, a, in Mac a Finder window. Uh, I don't know what the equivalent is in uh, in the Mac in the Microsoft world. Explorer. Um, yeah, File Explorer, yeah. something like that. And then uh, from there, what we would do is we would look at the files and see which ones we want want to uh, to use. Then we drag those uh, those over into Photomatics, put it into an HDR. Then we put it into Light uh, Lightroom, do the editing, and then export from Lightroom. Um, and then there's a couple of steps in between that we might uh, we might one day share. <laughs> I could I could use yeah. that I could use that segue a little bit and. Uh... Well, yeah, Ron, you and I have talked about uh, a couple of the the secrets that. Uh, that uh that i do but uh yeah well, that was, uh, <laughs> I, w I wouldn't give away any secrets 
No, not how but, those. <laughs> no, not <laughs> business secrets. <laughs> yeah, the, well, the, you know, a lot of times I think the business part is much harder to own to get, really get good at than the, the pho photography part. But I guess that's well, that definitely. Just shows, that just shows where I feel like I'm better, right? <laughs> is the photography well, part rather than this. Let's face it, you know, uh, they always say that if you have two people, one's an excellent photographer and a poor business person, or you have a good business person that's a poor photographer, the business person is going to do a whole lot better. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, yeah, kind of all comes down to sales, doesn't it? You it get does. Somebody, you get somebody selling something that might be, it can't be bad, I don't think, but if it's if it's close, then the, the good salesperson is going to, going to win every time. Oh, Yeah. But I could I could use that that segue, uh, Rob. And um, I've got. Do you guys see my Lightroom now? Yep, I see yes. it there. Yep. Yeah. Th so uh, this uh, the same applies for uh, Capture One and Lightroom, where you can work within um, right within there, and you don't really you don't even have to go out. You can take like. So I just grabbed uh, some old real estate samples, but I can <clears throat> I can group them or stack them, or or I don't even really have to stack mm -hmm. them to do single image processing but i can combine them right here so i could take like a let me take the stack just because it's i covered the dynamic range pretty well in it where yeah. these are kind of old and i didn't always do it back then but i can i, I won't bore you with the, the details but you can um, process right here from 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 <clears throat> excuse me right here in, in Lightroom. Uh, I should turn off my notifications, shouldn't I? Um, do not disturb. Boom. So yeah, if you if you wanted to stay in workflow in one place, you can do things like this, like uh, oh, taking definitely. these and exporting them. And it's, it's taking a little bit of time because the first thing it does is it calls Lightroom to do the raw conversion. So they're... Mm -hmm getting kind of the best of both best of getting the best out of each tool that you use. So Lightroom has that high end raw processor. So let's go ahead and convert them there and then it'll combine those in Photomatics Pro. Yeah. Of course, one I thing I love about uh, the, the Lightroom one is that you can do, if you've got a job where it's a, it's a little bit more intense. So for example, if you're doing something for a builder where you have to look at every single image and make sure that they're a hundred percent, and the Lightroom uh, plugin this way is fantastic uh, because you do have that full control. Uh, otherwise, you know the the other benefit and the the main reason that we use um, uh, Photomatics is because it has the ability to batch process and yeah. on, on the standalone version, and that's fantastic. Where all we would have to do is go into the uh, where we're going to bridge. Look at all the photos that we're going to do. We attach a preset to it, write the the XML files, and then just drop the folder into uh, Photomatics, press batch, and then it does everything. So if you've got 100, 100 photos in a place, you can be done processing, um, actual hands-on processing at your computer in around two minutes. And then the rest of it is all automated. And you just have to wait for the the uh, the computer do everything else, and quite frankly, with uh, with the way that our business works. So, for example, we go to a shoot. Uh, we'd be you know we'd go up to the door, knock on the door, say hello, do the pleasantries for around five uh, five to ten minutes with the the homeowner. Then we go go through the home, turn on all the lights, make sure everything is nice and put away. Uh, shoot the place around half an hour, and then again ending pleasantries, and then we walk out. So all in all, you're done in around forty minutes to an hour, depending on the size of the place. And once we do this two or three minutes on the computer, we do the, uh, We can then just take the comu computer, put it onto the driver's uh, passenger seat of our car, and drive to the next shoot. By the time we're there, it's done. <laughs> nice. Right. Yeah, that's how do you how do you power the computer? Uh, whenever we go into a place, uh, we bring in a, bu a bunch of gear and put it on the floor and say, "Hey, do you mind if I plug this in?" <laughs> <Nice>. And they <laughs> look nice. at it and they think, "Oh, you're bringing in a lot of gear to get your work done." It's like Yes, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> it. Uh, little do they know that yes, we we do just do that to uh, for well for two reasons. Number one, uh, we don't ever want to keep gear in our car because if you're mm -hmm. at a shoot and stuff gets stolen out of your car, it destroys your day because yeah. you mm -hmm. can't 
get that stuff back and reprogram it in time for the next shoot. And you could easily have you could e easily have one of those smart thief type people that kind of know what you do and really yeah see what's going to happen and plan that. That's exactly. Yeah. Oh, and for anybody out there that um, we saw one of our uh, friends do this, they thought it would be a good idea to decal their car saying "real estate photographer." <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> okay. Not a good idea, all right? <laughs> that car got broken into so many times. <laughs> He's like, Ooh. screw it. <laughs> it's not so worth the advertising. Business tip, business tip. Don't put those cat decal writing on your car. Yeah, no, exactly. that's a good idea. In, unless, yeah. It says, unless it says, I don't leave anything in here. Oh, well, even then. <laughs> then you, yeah, then you get caught carrying it around, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Rob, did yeah. you know you can do um, batch processing within Lightroom now? Oh, yeah, there's from a, Stacks. There's a new... There's a new um, Photomatics batch plugin uh, huh. that just takes the stacks and the album that you stack and treats them as a bracket and just runs it. Really? Oh, okay. I'm so going to play with that. I, and um, just to, from what you're saying, I like to use bridge in a lot of cases because one of the longest, the, one of the longest processes that I, that are, it's in my life is importing into Lightroom. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of down with the using bridge as well. However, uh, this is so common. I still use Lightroom because it's just, uh, maybe I'm oh, invested so and, it, and it still doesn't work. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I like Capture One as well, but yeah, anyway, uh, mm -hmm. a couple just different options for you. And because one of the rest, one of the, some of the questions that I get a lot, the answer is there are so many answers. There's so many possibilities in your workflows mm -hmm. and in the stuff that uh, has to do with how you shoot and what, how you, what you like to do and how your work and so of many course. things. So. It's right. We get that question. We get that question all the time. It's like, what, uh, what do you use? And so, essentially, it's just the Adobe Suite and Photomatics as a general. But then, okay. you know, we do use Capture One. Um, but I use that whenever I'm shooting. So uh, I use Capture One whenever I'm shooting with my Fuji. So my Fuji GF, uh, my 50R, uh, which is a medium format. If I'm shooting with that, then yes, Capture One has so much nice. Uh, it's so much nicer. Are you, um, actually, are you actually tethering it for real estate? No, this is more for uh, my other commercial stuff that I do. Right, right. that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that's kind of what yeah. uh, Capture One has really started out for, right? Was studio, um, mm -hmm. especially like still life and yeah, work and... No, definitely different for uh, for that. But you know, for the rest of the stuff, we're shooting mostly Canon, and uh, for for that stuff, the Adobe stuff works so much better. You got somebody somebody trying to jump in used, but it says device not connected, so. I guess it won't really do anything. So if you're listening uh, used, you need to connect your at least microphone. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> and uh, Wade's in the chat. He says that, that they're oh they're not they're not allowed to do studio work. Going to stick with landscapes and real estate for now. Hmm. I know I know we're talking about real estate, but I was thinking about doing some. I know everybody's doing the porch thing, but I was thinking about doing real. Uh, why not do some? You know, if people are wanting to do it anyway, do some portrait type stuff just in a kind of a publicish place. Like there's a little kind of mm -hmm. a plaza right next to me that I could be very safe. And anyway, just a side yeah. note, side well, thought. Well, for real estate photographers out there right now, like if you're if you're not shooting because of COVID, and uh, but you still want to keep busy. There's a whole ton of things that you can do. Like right now, um, in Calgary, it's not quite the season yet because everything is still brown. There's no green leaves, and the grass is all still dead. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it is in, it is in Windsor, but uh, you know, I know some more of the green. Uh, more green. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah it's coming yeah. along. It's coming along. It was nice. 71 today, so. Oh, geez, it's lovely. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, it, when you go further, further south, it does get warmer. And I know people, uh, there are places where it's warmer. Uh, people are allowed to go out into some areas as long as they keep the social distancing going. But this is a great time to go out and get just stock shots of areas because you know that realtors are going to be out there saying, hey, this home here is in a really cool neighborhood. Do you mind getting some shots of the uh, this, this, and this around there? And usually you're like, ah, oh, I got another shoot coming up. I don't have the time. Well, guess what? You have the time right now. Go out there, right. grab those shots. You're not going to get harassed by people saying, why are you shooting this right now? Because they don't want to talk to you right now. <laughs> True. It's a fantastic time to get all these area shots and your stock photography up so that when next time, you know, 
It's a oh God. It's a great idea. Right? Like think about this. How many times have you had a listing where the realtor's like, hey, there's a school around the corner and you don't want to go there being the creepy guy holding a camera out of a car, taking a shot of a school where there are kids, kids coming out of the, the front door. Right? True. <laughs> They're all yeah. closed. Go out there. Shoot the, shoot the school right now because nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's another out of, uh, out of the box uh, idea that if, if you didn't see the last time we did this, Rob had outside the box ideas because like you, you mentioned at the beginning, you come from a different, your background comes from working more in the real estate biz. And so you're really able to connect with them. And so get some really good ideas for um, staying connected with, with them. And that's a really good one. I'm, I'm, I gotta take it. I gotta take that one. Uh, go around yeah, and just, build up, build up the neighborhood stock that can be used over and over. Yeah, exactly. And if you actually see a place where there's a like a restaurant where there's a lineup of people waiting to get the takeout stuff, that might not be a bad shot either. What, just what, what grab those. Sure. Uh, if you, if you have a shot of a say like a restaurant where they're doing takeout and you have a whole lineup of people outside, that's not a bad shot to take. Because if you think about it, once things get better, you could go to the restaurant owner and say, hey, you want, here's a photo of how popular your place was during, during the crisis. This would be a great one for you to have in your social media feed. Here you go. Right. True. If you get yeah. a good and, shot with a good crowd, yeah. That, yeah, and the thing is, you just give it to them. Because once you give them the, uh, the photos and you start walking away, they'll say, hey, do you do other types of photography? And right, you, and now right. you got you got a client just through goodwill. Plus let's if face you, it. If, I think once I think once you sell it to them, now you're you're committed to getting uh, releases from all the people in the crowd. Pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. For so you just for advertising. Yeah, and there's nothing better. There's no better introduction than a, than than something that's free. And you know, a lot of guys know this. Why would you go? To, like, let's face it. We go. Uh, remember when you were dating? What was the first thing that you did? You went up to someone and say, hey, can I buy you a beer? Okay. Giving something <laughs> away for free is the easiest way to right. introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apply dating to a business. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> we got a, uh, so, um, so Jeff, you're, you're talking about getting into this kind of photography business. And right. there's a comment, uh, Christine says, uh, how do you price your real estate jobs? Yeah. Uh, she says, I live in a rural area in the, oh boy. Ottawa Valley, it's all Canadians, uh, <laughs> and pricing. We're very bored right. up here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's about the same, probably. Uh, yeah. yeah, pricing. Um, uh, well, it's, so, it's always this, it's always this really great conversation. There are tools, and there's yeah. there's science behind it. And let's find out what Rob does. Well, so for the way that I look at it is this: um, retail is easy. Okay, retail is you have a product and then you do your markup. Okay, so uh, pretty pretty simple in, in that sense. Uh, with what we are doing, we are taking our time and we have to put a markup based on our time. And one of the things that happens is people tend to undervalue themselves a lot, and so we end up shooting and giving it away for less less than minimum wage. And so what I always look at is, let's take a, an idea of, a, okay, so how much is your time worth? So if you say my time is worth $50 an hour, and you say, okay, so $50 an hour, if I was to work at a regular job, that'd be a hundred grand a year. Great, but you're not working 40 hours a week, 50 hours, 50 weeks a year. You are gonna be working probably around a, third of that and the rest of the time you're going to be using going out getting business and stuff like that so if you look at it that way you have to take that time and then increase it to adjust for the amount of time that you're doing other things like getting the marketing done so if you up that to around 60 70 dollars whatever it is whatever it is that makes makes sense and feels fair to you well, stick with that and then you just say well how long does it take me to drive out to a shoot average is half an hour to, sh to get to a shoot. I'll spend an hour at a shoot and then a half an hour back and then half an hour processing. So there's two and a half hours. So two and a half hours at $70 an hour, you're looking at uh, two, a hundred and what? 185, something like that? 175, yeah. I think, so. I think it was 75. So right there, you've got the, you got the price. Now, 175, that is what you should be making. Now, here's the thing. 
people don't always want to pay 100% all the time. So it's easier to negotiate down than it is up. So what I would suggest is start start higher. Say start at 220, 225. And then say, hey, you know what? Uh, we're starting this out. I'll give you 25% off. And what you're doing is, yes, you are giving that discount, but you're also keeping within the hourly where you're still valuing yourself and you're valuing your time. And from I that... Wanna, wanna, I just yeah. want to add to the side to that, that when you're doing this kind of business, there are so many things that you're doing, not only that you have done, because a certain amount of expertise comes into this, but I guess that goes for any job, but there's all a lot of, um, you're still running your business that is not something you would be directly charging your clients for. So you're everything from your accounting to mm -hmm. your storage and your back cleaning up. your gear and the amortization of your gear. All, all, all of it. Buy, yeah. What about just buying the gear? Right. So mm -hmm. there's, uh, when you, when you start quoting things like that is, and people look at it just as per hour, I think that's, if somebody got to consider that there's more involved with it. So it's, oh, of course. Yeah. yeah and so uh, give, find out what you're comfortable with and happy with and fair, of course, to, mm -hmm. to, uh, based on per hour. But then also, um, like when I, when I quote things, <clears throat> especially, uh, when they're bigger and they're not just like one house or, but they're like a, kind of a bigger job that may even take days, I base it on day rates and it has all that kind of just figured in and what I've mm -hmm. come to find to be fair and, and, and um, very valuable for the client as well. So that's that, that balance is where the tough part comes in. Would you not lower? Only, not only to figure it out and know, but also that people don't really realize that. All they think of is you don't have to pay for film. That's really mm -hmm. all we get. <laughs> yeah. To this day. Uh, oh yeah. I would you lower time. your, would you lower your hourly rate uh, to break into the market? Um, like do you, would, you, would you do that? Would, you can always, okay, so yes, you can always give a discount. Okay. But imagine this, you go up to somebody and say, okay, yeah, that was 150 bucks. Okay, so you've done 10 shoes with me now? Okay, now I'm gonna increase to 175. Yeah. <laughs> That's not yeah, gonna there's, fly. There's this old, one of these old marketing adages that I always believed in is that you can never, if you gain a customer by discounting, you'll never bring them up. You'll never bring nope. it up. They, they won't, the right. value is established for them, something, something internal, and it's never gonna work. Yeah. That. So yeah. the only times I've ever really uh, been a really discount oriented is somebody that's with such a regular customer. So like, when, like several years ago when I was doing more real estate, I had one of, like a couple of regular customers that would call me up one day and say, can you come over tomorrow? And if I could, I could. Sometimes I'd be like, okay, I have my kid with me. Can, and so they so send someone along to kind of we'd do it as a team, you know? And mm -hmm. um, But I'd usually show up at the location and they'd be there to meet me with a check and they knew what they were going to get. I knew what they wanted. So over time we just may, kind of made a price that was great because it worked that way. We, because mm -hmm. there, there was no setup because yeah. getting to getting a, established with a client is costly in your time and everything for both of you. Oh, learning what the they relationships want, learning are how the deliveries work. Yeah. And how the, yeah. Are you going to get paid in a reasonable time? And when all that's not, when none of that is mysterious anymore, those are the times for me that I've decided to, to handle it that way to keep that customer and because they do like what I'm doing and but other people are saying that they'll do it for less we had to find an arrangement so, so oh, you yeah. did discount then as opposed to at the beginning or anything like that right? yeah I'm, I'm, I'm really anti-discount in general um, yeah no exactly like imagine this uh so let, let's take a, a comparison so take a look at uh things that are of value to people right now so look at a tv would you ever buy a TV full price? No, of course not. <laughs> Why? No. Because they're well, always discounted. Right. Yeah. Okay. You can always find it cheaper somewhere else, right? Yeah. But if you were if you're getting an iPhone or a Mac, mm -hmm. those things are almost never on sale. Right. And so right. people are happy to pay full price for them. And so if you look at it that way and say, okay, if if something never goes on sale, then it has more value and you will, people will see the value, appreciate the value. And there's a certain, a certain psychological thing that happens where people look at it and say, yeah, I paid full price for this. Well, why did I pay full price for it? Well, because it's better. Right. 
And that's not a bad place to be where people think, oh, I pay more for these guys because they're better. Like be that person and you'll right. do a whole lot better. And you'll have better clients too. You'll have people who appreciate what you do and the work that you do rather than the people who are nickel and diamond because those are the people that are gonna complain about every single shot to try and get another discount from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Would you, um, um, bringing in Mark Morrow, thanks for click, what do you call this, calling hey, in, Mark? clicking in? Hey, Mark. Hey, long, Ron, long how you doing? Can you guys hear me okay? Yep, yeah. Sound good. Yep. Got a righteous beard going on there. I'm trying to compete with you. <laughs> Man, you're there. As long as, <laughs> yeah. as long as my hair's not getting cut, I'm leaving the beard not cut as well. So we'll see what That's happens. That's funny. Yeah, my <laughs> wife won't let me cut it. She said she wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't recognize me without it. So I've had it for I don't know thirty years now. Well, you've it's always crazy. had, but was it always like? Uh, it, no, uh, it's gotten gray in the past couple of years. Okay. It didn't seem. <laughs> so, I mean, it's been a few years since I've seen you in person, but. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, man. Good to different. see you again, brother. Yeah, yeah definitely. It did, did look different when I was first. Uh, uh, Enjoy it. Enjoying the conversation. I was listening in the car. Cool. Sorry. Hey, real, real quick. Uh, Ciao, Antonio. Uh, call us. Let's uh, get some Spanish vocabulary lesson in photography going. Uh, he's in, said, he said greetings from Mexico. Nice. If I missed you in the comments, I'm kind of trying to keep up with <laughs> and everything. I don't know <laughs> if I'm really succeeding or not, but, um, so Mark, um, uh, what's going on, man? Thanks for calling in. I, oh I, man, nothing you, at all. Dude, have... I've just, just been doing, been working in the yard and doing all kinds of crazy stuff today. It's nice to, uh, come inside for a little while and, uh, wake the kids up at least. That's a, that's a good way. That's, I'm glad you're happy to get inside instead of happy to get, I'm always happy to get outside whenever it happens. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. We spend a lot of time outside these days. It's great. Yeah. They're talking about, uh, the, the place where I worked during my day job, Ron knows all about that stuff. The, uh, <clears throat> the, um, they're already talking about going back to work full time and I'm not going. So I'll have to figure out something else. Going back into photography full time, I guess. Uh, it's been fun listening to you guys talk about real estate photography, though. I, mean, I appreciate your uh, your insights and uh, how you price a job is very similar, actually, to the way I price a job. That's nice to know. I had no idea. Yeah. But, yeah um, I, once you start comparing, like I know a bunch of guys out there that are uh, looking to go online, they find out what their competitors are doing, and then they try and undercut it. Yeah. And unfortunately, if you if you have a if you have a model like that, there's always going to be something that's going to undercut you. So yeah, you're right. just you're just going to sink. Like it's yeah. a it's a slippery can, slope and it's fast. Can I just say? Can I just say out loud for whoever ever sees this is if that's how you price it, if you look at everybody else's prices and then say take off ten percent or something. I mean, come on, <laughs> this is yeah. Uh, what, yeah. What would you What would you guys think about? Um, because we were saying uh, I was saying I'm kind of anti discount, which is true. Not that I don't do it, but um. My background comes from hospitality industry, and so there was always this discount on that one. And when they were acceptable, kind of, what is it about? Some things are just, some things can be uh, yield managed, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. airlines and hotels, mm -hmm. they yield managed for the, the price based on the business levels and everything. Other things that's just not allowed somehow, and that's just something we accept for some reason. So, uh, I guess what I'm getting to is instead of offering discounts to get new business, what about just, if you're going to discount, just discount at a hundred percent for the first one, you know, first one's free or whatever and mm -hmm. see if they like mm -hmm. it. If it's worth it to you, if you're getting started and you have the time for me, when I was getting started, I would spend so much time processing those jobs to try to figure out my way and how I, well, for, first of all, I have to learn, I had stuff to learn. Um, focus on white balance guys. If you're getting started, focus on white balance <laughs> when you start out with uh, real estate photography. It's, it's, uh, one of the difficult things that you have to deal with. So mm -hmm. you can, if somebody asks, then I'll go into it more, but otherwise I'll just go right by it. How do you do white balance, Ron? <laughs> How do you do it? One of us. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, it's always changing, but I typically shoot auto, but I, capture raw so I can change it. And so mm -hmm. if I don't like what the camera did, then I can just grab a hold of it myself and make the adjustments. Lately, mm -hmm. yeah. since Mark asked, lately <laughs> I've been... Good um, answer. I, I feel a lot better now. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing uh, 
uh, this is uh, in Lightroom in particular, and I would uh, change it from, so I'd grab a bracketed set. Okay, so we're, let's, well, first of all, white balance is not difficult when it's outside. So if you're doing exterior, unless there's unusual conditions, just it's fine. You can just use auto or choose, you know, sunlight. Choose so, daytime, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if dusk, maybe mm -hmm. we can talk about later. But um, the the interiors, in, let's say you have an interior. Well, uh, should I bother sharing the screen again? I have the ability. Might as well do this. So if uh, if you have an interior with the sun coming in significant amount, and you have man-made lights on, I guess in this instance I turned them off or <laughs> turned them off. But mm -hmm. if you have the man-made lights on, um, then it's going to mix the sources of light, the kinds of light sources. Yeah. So you have a you, you can't really choose. Is you have to choose one or the other um, mode, and uh, so I've been. Uh, you know what? Let me. I'm curious to see how you do this, man, because I've been making just one of each, one of whatever I need, and just mask it in wherever I need it. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm curious to yeah. see what you do here. No, one, one of you each are... in what? It, which area? Hmm. What, um, one of each with with which area you... like the uh, i would shoot i would shoot i would make i would white balance one for the incandescent you know and and then what and then white balance the other for the outside like the daylight yeah you know probably or try that at least and then mask them in manually like make one in photomatics one way make the other one the other way right. and then bring them uh, together you know, yeah. on individual layers, you know, and just kind of mask in the one where I need it. If I have more of one than the other, then I'll obviously go with that one over the other one. But I'm curious to see, though, if there's something that I'm something more, you know, uh, more uh, subtle or simple that I'm overlooking here. I'm curious. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the normal way is I would choose the one that has the most influence. So like in a in a room like this one where there's a lot of windows. Uh, the most of the lights coming in from outside where I think it's, it's probably just that ceiling light on. I don't know if there's any other ones. It's your oh, screen no. on. Are you sharing your screen? Oh, Is it just me? Do I need to come back out and back uh, in? I think I lost the screen, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, there you go. How about now? Yep. Gotcha. Ah, okay. So I was clicking through these and nobody's seen it. <laughs> So we've got this room with a lot of light on one side. This is a typical issue, difficult spot for a real estate photographer, right? We've all seen that kind of thing. Right. So when there's a lot of light coming in from outside, then you've got, you want to use a white balance. Like you could just use the preset of daylight or you could set it to, uh, sorry, I don't want to get lost in all the details, but you need to check, choose a right white balance for outside for daylight. And there's uh, at least the one ceiling light on in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I've been experimenting with, let me go into develop, is my computer is going to be very challenged with all the screen sharing and all the apps going on. So what I wanted to do here is select all of the ones from this particular room. I can select all of them from the entire shoot would be the same thing in this case. And just go over and use the powers of Adobe <laughs> and uh, change this from, it would have been as shot before and just change it to auto. And I found that uh, Lightroom, it won't sync the exact um, white balance. It'll choose a different one for each one. So this one's at 5,000 this one's at 7,000. So it chooses a different white balance for each image. And then when I combine the images, I get pretty close to the right colors. And I can do a very quick editing on any anyone that there's a color cast of a little bit of blue coming in from the outside light, for instance. And I can just do a quick, I just call it a paint job, just do a really quick uh, brush tool. Yep. Either, either in the photomatic step or <clears throat> in the Lightroom step. So... I could run it even though again my computer is being taxed pretty hard. I'm not sure if it'll if it'll take a really, really long time. 
so I can. No. Now, now, Mark, I just want to chime in here. If uh, if you're doing that where you're taking uh, two shots and then you're or two variations and then you're massing one over the other and all this stuff, here's a really simple way that we used to do a long time ago, especially if you have a bright room. Uh, take the same HDR twice. Do it once with the lights on, do it once with the lights off. And then put uh, put them over each other and you take the one that has the lights off and you make that your color, make that a color layer. And as soon as you do that, all your colors are fine because it's only one light source. Interesting. But hmm. The other one, because it has the lights on, it becomes, uh, it shows the luminosity of everything. Mm -hmm. And now you can actually see how the lighting would work and you get the natural light. It's a yeah. little bit of a pain in the ass to go. No, and, no, you know, I hear you. It makes sense though. That's that. a good, I'll try that yeah. just for fun. That's interesting. I've never thought trying to do one without the lights and one with the lights. I automatically just turn the lights on, you know. So yeah, I, I think there's um, a, I think there's one of those, um, one of those many answers to the question about lights on or off is find out which one works better in yeah. different mm -hmm. situations. Like the the one yeah. I had, the one I had. I get the screen sharing back here in a second, but the one I had on before had a big skylight, so really you didn't even need the lights on inside. I think it's probably why they were off. Yeah. But, mm -hmm there is something visual, visually positive to have, to have the lights on. I think there's something that if the lamps are not on, it looks kind of odd to us. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. like in a, in a landscape shot, if your horizon is off just by a little bit, you don't really know why you don't like the picture, but it doesn't look right to you. And I think that kind of thing has to do as same kind of thing with lamps being on. So I, I like to keep them on, but sometimes it's just worth it to have them off because I've been fighting this, mm -hmm been fighting the different color temperatures all attacking my camera at once. I've been fighting that for years and years and sometimes it's better to turn them off. Yeah. And yeah, we just did a, we just did a big shoot where uh, we had to do a time lapse of a, of a, a construction rental. And so when we're doing that, we looked at it and thought, okay, well, we don't want to color correct every single one of these. So we went around and we actually changed out all the bulbs in the entire place to, to daytime uh, LEDs. And we got the brightest daytime LEDs that we could find so that we are almost overpowering the, the sunlight coming from the windows and set everything from there. And the nice thing is we also used, uh, for that one, we used a Fuji X-T2, which has a uh, iOS-less uh, sensor, which uh, essentially means that um, it's, it's a fantastic camera. If you, if you shoot it, say you shoot it at ISO, 18, 800, uh, ISO 800, and you look in the back of the camera and it's black or completely white. In Lightroom, it's, it's kept all the information in there. So you can just pull it right back down and see all the, uh, the data in it. It's fantastic. It's, yeah. like a, it's, oh, wow. it's a huge dynamic range and fantastic. So, you know, we did that and it was great. You know, just white bulbs all around, match them all. And then we did the time lapse and came out great. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry to interrupt you, Ron. You were showing us something. Yeah, it was uh, mm -hmm. messing around with where's the screen, <laughs> and where is it not, and where's Lightroom. And Mr. Lutz, um, you you said that you're a uh, college, a uh, high school teacher. Yes. And your and your question was how was your original question how how did people how do you get into real estate photography? Yeah, that so was, was my that, first did question. I catch yeah. That? Yep, you're right. Okay. You know, do you have students that are potentially interested? Do you have, uh, or is it uh, it's just a, a personal, personal thing, question for yourself? Yes. It's a personal thing. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I think with that, getting back to the business stuff, the more that I'm in business, the more that I realize that uh, business is much like high school, where the popular guys get everything. <laughs> Like and it's true. You go out, you schmooze, you know people, you get them to like you, and then all of a sudden you get more business. And so right. during this whole COVID thing, we've been doing it where I've made it. I made it a, a nice. commitment to call two people a day just to check up on how they're doing, and whether it's okay. clients or friends or you know just people I haven't talked to in a while. And by doing that, I'm amazed at how many people are like, oh yeah, no, thanks for reaching out. Are you guys still doing your photos? You know what? I've got a listing that. I don't know if I should put up. Really, you think we should put it up now? Great. Well, have one of you guys come over, and that conversation happens a lot. And so, if you are the guy that knows how to be uh, good at, uh, you know, keeping in touch with people, you'll do fantastic. 
Right. And um, just hey, Rob, remember, Rob, it's you, people. And do you uh, up there? Do you compete with uh, bigger or bigger mid-sized companies, or very many individual photographers out there? Uh, there are, uh, you know, there's around four or five companies like mine now. And uh, it's funny. I had uh, uh, two of the guys that uh, two of the other. Okay, so I would say that there's three main big companies out there. Mine. Uh, and then there's two others and we all know each other. We've all started this out pretty much around the same time. One guy started from a more of a video background and wanted to do videos for realtors. And I started off doing uh, mostly twilight photography back then. And then this other guy, he started out wanting to do daytime photography. And had we all gotten together back then, we would have had a really big company by now. But instead, we all just uh, kept on going our own way. And then we all just got to the point where we all know um we all do exactly the same thing it's just we have three companies that are doing it and always um, compete always compete everybody gets better it, it really does and you know we're all different in terms of how we approach things and how we approach our clients and how we approach business and life and staffing and all that so you know there's there's enough room for everybody there really is and even the small guys that are coming out now they're coming out with i've seen some guys with some wicked wicked stuff but at the same time, they don't have the, uh, I don't know if they have the business sense to keep it running or they might be missing out on the, the pricing side. Like there's one guy out there that's, I hate to say it, his work is just absolutely phenomenal and he's charging like 90 bucks for it. And what's going to happen, he's, gonna, he's just going to burn out and he won't be able to keep the quality up. And if, even if he does keep the quality up, he'll never be able to grow because at that level of quality, he can't teach somebody else to do it, pay them even less than what he's making and keep his business running. So, you know, there's, um, there's certain limitations and there's certain things that you got to do to keep the, keep the, keep the lights on, keep running. And uh, part of it is, you know, that pricing portion. And um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, well, one, thing, bro, one thing about, uh, um, sorry, let me uh, actually need to finish this yeah. so I can get off the screen and then, um, cause I, to have um, <laughs> can't really see every, both of you guys in this at the same time, but I just uh, combined this, that bedroom that I was showing you before. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't have too much color cast. I would just say some on, I don't know how much you can see on this uh, screen share. I don't think it's yeah. so high resolution, but there's some kind of blue cast on the, on the floor. There's some wood, mm -hmm. wood flooring. Mm -hmm. And uh, that light looks really yellow to me, but that's about it. And frankly, for real estate photos, depending how much you're charging, I might not worry about that. Oh, or, any, any client I've ever had would be thrilled with that. Okay. <clears throat> for, for, nice photo. for, for most, I, uh, for most, for most MLS, you know, um, yeah, you for know, MLS, yeah. needs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there, there are a couple of options you can do. Uh, there's, uh, like right at this step, there's, um, a brush that we could play with to change the uh, temperature. So I could just, um, the brush bigger and i could just brush it out whoops i missed, yeah. the, missed the spot but <laughs> um just brush it out right there uh i could also just go ahead and take this salute this uh where let's say let's say i am going to work on it some more let's say this is 90 percent done i could do the rest of that 10 percent here or in lightroom yeah and paint out those uh so mm -hmm. one thing and i'm going to finish it here so that i can finish that little workflow I was playing with recently. I had a somebody from the uh, Photomatic support that was asking about this exact question and his shots were, they had a lot of different colors of paint and everything in the room is really tough one. So I asked him to send them to me and I was using those to experiment. And um, so I was playing around with a little bit different workflow. That's nice, man. That was a good result. And, Good example. Now that now that it's back here, and I haven't done this with this image before, but what if I just go auto white balance here again? And it went a hmm, went a little too too much green for me. But now, Ron, one of the things that we've been uh, like I've been teaching a bunch of courses up in uh, Calgary about real estate photography, and when we get into images like this, the the tricks that we we say are uh, do something once and make it a preset. Because every time you create something like that, then all you can all you have to do would be 
grab all the images, add one preset, and it, and it applies it to everything, which saves you a whole ton of time. And the one that we do for the orange lights here is we just go into the HSL sliders, the uh, hue, saturation, and luminance sliders, and we think about what light is. So with the light, why is it orange? It's orange because it's an incandescent light that's burning. Okay, so if we know that it's gonna be orange, if it's burning, that means it's, it's going to be um, uh, brighter. And what, it, uh, what Photomax designs is it actually just made it darker. So if we wanna get rid of the color cast from something that's orange, why not just make it brighter again? And so in the HSL, we actually don't uh, take down the saturation, but instead we turn it around and we increase the luminescence of the yellows and oranges. And what we find when we do the that, you all of a sudden brighten up the room where the lights are, plus that color slowly starts going away. Mo see, most of most of my that just now? yeah that was great I you mean, did worth, yeah. that was worth the price of admission thanks Rob. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> yeah that's most of my workflow in post processing is uh, is definitely dealing is doing the exact thing you opening up a uh, a hsl layer in photoshop and uh i'll make these i'll, I'll batch all these through and then they'll all have the same problem so mm -hmm. I'll bring them all through and then, yeah, just do the same. That's the simplest fix for an orange light that I've found. I, uh, you know, and sometimes I don't want it to affect everything else. I want the richness in the floor. I want the richness in this or that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you just only want it in the light source. And so I'll use gradient, you know, gradient fades away from the center of that mm -hmm. light fixture mm -hmm. just to make it not so obvious or whatever. But uh, either way, either adjustment that you made with this, Ron, looks good. That looks nice and natural and even and clean. and. Yeah, when I did. I still did uh, after after Rob's. Uh, I don't want to call it a trick. After Rob's move, <laughs> after his yeah. uh, Aikido, I went to saturation and I still brought it down a little bit. And I like it, especially for this one because then it also um, had a nice impact oh. on the ceiling. I thought. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it did. Yeah. That that's a nice even light. And the you know, and frankly, the the light is a little yellow. So I try to keep it real now instead of try to really fade it out like I used to try to make take it. I'll drag that loom slider all the way up and you know, I don't do that so much anymore. Most of the way, yeah. but not all the way anymore to um, one was, of the this, key this things good, that this was a good meeting for <laughs> new, new <laughs> tricks. Yeah, man. Hey, uh, Jeff, one thing about the, uh, to someone just getting started in real estate photography, um, the people that I talk to, the things I tell them when they ask me, what does it take to get involved with it? Um, <clears throat> The number one thing uh, is uh, really there's just a few things to keep in mind, and, and, and mostly they have to do with shooting and how you shoot it. Uh, you want, obviously, your images to be better than theirs. Um, and in most cases, what I find, the, only, you know, the, the single thing that a person needs to do in real estate photography to set their work apart immediately is to shoot it straight. Okay. If you shoot it straight you will immediately separate your work from from 95% of the people in the magazines in your demographic. I live in Roanoke, Virginia, which is a small town nestled in the mountains here in southwestern Virginia. We're about three hours south of Richmond. That's the largest populace probably we have. Northern Virginia up in D.C. obviously is extremely populated. A lot of competition up there in those regions. And, and uh, down here, I have a few companies such as Rob's that really run the market they have a great product they have great established relationships for a long time with the realtors i've come to appreciate myself how much each realtor not each realtor but most good realtors really have on them they have dozens at any given time of property properties that they're invested in that they're either paying landscapers they're paying painters. They're paying people out of their own pockets. They have a lot invested. They get paid, but they have a lot invested. I've come to appreciate that about real estate, about real estate agents. Right. They, 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 they don't get paid until somebody buys the house. And sometimes that can be a while. And sometimes they have, again, dozens of these things on their hands that they themselves are personally vested in to see that it sells. And they just really hope that it does. And so for a real estate photographer to come in and, uh, you know, fleece them, 
for lack of better terms, is something that they're sensitive to, at least in my market. Oh, yeah. They, no, it's, yeah. Uh, it's they're true. sensitive. They yeah, the cat's yeah. out on that. They're sensitive to it. If you do really good work. Now, I have I have friends that have said, Mark, you know, <clears throat> house, you know, they were, they were about to buy a house. They're the new family buying a home, first home. The first house had excellent photos. We went in. The house didn't look anything really like the photos. Second house was junky photos. I mean, crooked. Everything was just like, what is that? Picture of a countertop. Went in the place. Beautiful. Like they, This was our home. This was the home we were going to buy. They don't look anything like the photos. Whoever, you know, so the photos can be deceiving in that way. They can be too good, if you know what I mean. Right. They don't, they don't necessarily sell the, fo- the, the property. And that's what a realtor is looking at. They, I mean, at least in the MLS level, not the high end people who are trying to look for twilight shots and really creative stuff and unique angles. They have the money to spend at the, for this stuff. Right. Most realtors do not want to do that. It's very blue collar work. Um, they would love to go in. They try all the time and they succeed nowadays uh, with the AI features available in phones, I guess. I mean, they're able to actually like, shoot their own photographs somehow. So I don't, I don't know, you know, it's become very difficult to, to, for me, I stopped working with realtors in general. I just got it off of my plan in general well, let's because, because I ended up spending way more time because I take really good value in my post-processing and in my work, but, but, but real estate photography doesn't want that. It doesn't want an artistic point of view. If you can bring that to it and you can do it efficiently and effectively and charge the right price and be and be comfortable with everything, everybody's comfortable with all of this, then you can you can strike the right medium. Then yeah, it's power really, to you. I mean, really but, right. to, really but I over process. I spend way too much time. I overcommit. I spend three hours at the job site, Rob, when I know I'm supposed to spend 45. I'm yeah. not supposed to spend three hours at this place, but I get carried away. Yeah. You know, I don't mm-hmm. even know. I don't even know how much time has gone by. I just look around and think, man, I probably should get out of here. I mean, I've that probably was- been here too long and, you know, but uh, I have 450 images, you know, most of them batch batches, you know, so, so it's only one, you know, there's only like a fraction of that many that I'm actually going to use, you know, the deal, but, um, I mean, really, you know, so really- I'm, I'm that guy and then I'll over, I'll underprice it. And I couldn't stay in business. I couldn't hang with the people that understand the business of this. That's the key. But if you yourself, Jeff, can if you know a realtor or you can know a yeah. realtor you are a teacher <laughs> you have access to realtors uh you know you you uh you know if you could just get one of them if you can shoot if you can prove to yourself that you can shoot a, sh- a scene straight what i'm saying is that an average residence you have what an eight foot ceiling right 10, 10 feet something like that the first thing that becomes automatic when you walk into a room is to locate the vertical midpoint that's the enemy of most photographers. They don't think about the vertical midpoint and they're shooting below it or above it and they have warping and they have issues. You're talking so, about realtors, right? Who are I'm shooting ta- their own. Yes. Uh, if they're shooting their own, they just, yeah. they, they get in the corner. It's corner shot central. I mean, they right. just shoot corners. That's all and they do. From, they shoot corners, level, you know, point of, from eye level tilted down. Yes. And looks, yeah. Get, yeah. get two walls, Jeff, oh, yeah. in, in the scene and you will be immediately better than what you're seeing if you can get two wall you don't have to sometimes you can't and if we're talking about like a small bathroom that's like a half bath or something downstairs in a house forget it right i mean take a picture of something and get out of there i mean but you don't even need it in the end i mean i, I mean I, I haven't i did it first i would cram all that stuff in there not knowing if i needed it or not but i began to realize that the realtors themselves are like no don't don't worry about that you know, just well, get, me the, is, get me the key yeah. stuff and the, anything that's square footage related. Right. Yeah. You know, Mark, I think that. you hit it right on the, I, I think you hit it right Thank there. Thank you. We said get the key stuff. The, the thing that we found was the biggest thing to the growth of our company was a standardization of what our product was. And what I mean by that is let's get a standardized shot list for every house. So you look at it and you say, okay. Okay. Let's look at a kitchen. A kitchen can be shot. Uh, so any any space, any square space can be shot from the center uh, and then shot straight on. It can be shot from four corners. So you got either four straight ons or four corners that you can shoot from. And then we also have this one where we call it a one third shot. So if you have a place that is um, like that, you, you can divide it up and say, okay, so one third of the way in from the corner. 
And the reason the one third of the way in from the corner works is because people put a lot of stuff in the corners, whether it's a plant uh, or a, a coat hanger or a lamp, things are always in the corner. So we come in one third of the way from each corner. And that means now you've got eight spaces, eight places in a room that you can shoot. Once you know that, you automatically see that you have 16 options to shoot in any space. If you have that, then you got to look at how uh, realtors and people look at photos online. You know, they're on their phones and they're, they're doing this. They're going to flip, 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 flip. Imagine music. Music has a rhythm. You know, you have this, this sort of same kind of rhythm. Then you have the chorus. Then you come back and it, it, it's repetitive. And as humans, we're very used to that. So when we're doing that with photos, if you have it as like straight on, straight on, straight on, corner, 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 all of a sudden those straight ons don't feel like they match the rest of it. But if you had like, like straight on, straight on, corner, corner, straight on, corner, corner, straight on, corner, corner, then you have that kind of rhythm. And okay. once you can create that kind of rhythm and create that kind of package, whenever somebody looks at it and flips through it, it feels natural. It feels normal. And that that makes the entire package worth so much more. So if you have 25 photos, maybe it is. It's a straight on corner, corner detail, straight on corner, corner detail, straight on corner, corner detail. But you do that and standardize it and your package looks better. And so everyone recognizes what they're gonna get. And if you start growing your company like I have, it's easier to talk to your staff and say, here's the shot list. We need eight shots in the kitchen four shots in the living room, three shots in the dining room, four, two shots for, or four shots for the master, two shots for the master ensuite, one shot for every other bathroom, two shots for every be other bedroom. They've got it. They know it. And so if they speaking, miss something, I'd say you missed this. And they speaking go Speaking of uh, the put kind of a uh, package they put together, I, I just realized I can put comments on the screen. <laughs> Christine said, do you also do video walkthroughs? And for uh, us? Uh, yeah. If the if the if the client you know asks for it, then I you know I will I'll do it. I have a uh, you know a DJI Osmo yeah, 4K yeah, Steadicam. Yeah. You know I have the Z axis thing on it that takes out the. I've learned to use that thing pretty well. I use it for I've, I use it all the time. It's a serious workhorse. I mean, outside of real estate photography, I mean music videos, anything. I mean documental short any any little pieces that require, mm -hmm. you know, it's a killer little piece, you know, I don't even know if they make them anymore, to tell you the truth. But uh, yeah, I do. If they require it, I will and would, um, you know, if people still call me, I still have a handful of realtors that, that, that like to work with me. And so I'll work with them. And uh, if they call all the time, but I don't, I don't, I don't aggressively uh, pursue that anymore, but it, there is a viable market there if you can locate that right price point. And the realtors that I worked with seem to love that $150, $150 price point for MLS work. And, they, and they'll call you back for another one and another one, another one. I mean, that, that price point will keep you busy. But I'm talking about just normal homes, you know, normal ranch homes. There's nothing to them. There's no real light to deal with. Like Ron just showed us the example. Ron has you know, prolific amount of work and, you know, in, uh, in, pan in panoramic and HDR photography. I mean, you've shot a lot of interesting structures, I'm sure, in where you live. We don't, we don't have a ton of that kind of stuff where I am. We have a lot of country homes and things like this that you could imagine, but it's very I rural. Wish, I wish I had a prolific amount of volume nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a great yeah, question no from uh, Christine here. Uh, do the pro uh, photos I process have to be licensed? Uh, okay, so good question. No, not for me, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Are, are, so, okay, in uh, in the states and Canada, uh, photography is considered a creative work, just like music, like anything that's written, anything that like a painting. It is considered a creative work. So you actually own the intellectual property of it. You have the you have the copyright for it, and you can yes, from there license it out. And that's just based on how the copyright laws work right now. If you want to give ownership of it, you have perfect. You have you have the right to do that as well. You can you can sell ownership of it. Um, we sell the license to it um, simply yeah. because, for the most part, we want to hold on to the licenses. Of, yeah, uh, it's, a, it, it's, it it's a matter of verbiage, perhaps at that point. You know, however you mm -hmm. want to uh, to to phrase that with them. You know, but I don't want them to feel like that they have to purchase that image from me again. No, um, and that's you know we we always say we we can always stipulate that into the um, 
into the uh, the license and say, yeah. yeah, you have a 99 year uh, unlimited yeah. non-transferable exactly. lease to be able to use this for any marketing purposes that you have for this. Yeah. Business. Other um, kind of work, yes, but for real for MLS real estate work, no. But for you know other high end things that are for you know for advertising purposes, obviously that's a different uh, ball game entirely. But for this kind of thing, for MLS real estate work, which is a very practical, realistic entry into the photography community into the photography world if a person wants to wants to has interest in photography or videography now because obviously uh to christine's question you know video has become a very ne necessary evil in the world of, of of real estate photography and so the nicer the property the the more the demand the higher the demand for for those types of uh, services indeed and i've done i've done you know, a few of the a handful of those myself and some aerial work as well. And, and, uh, but again, that's standard fare now, you know, in, in most mm -hmm. real estate uh, situations. So if you, if you do, if, if you, if you find yourself, if you find that service required of you, um, those types of the, the tools required to, to provide a high level product are becoming more readily available to the average, uh, uh, prosumer and, uh, entry level, uh, you know, a real estate photographer. So there are real tools now to make uh, a lot of really excellent. Um, uh, the, the, the key uh, really is telling the story of the home. What tells the story of the home? To me, that's how I look at it now. I used to look at it in terms of f-stop and shutter speed, but now I look at it as what tells the story. Um, mm -hmm. Anytime I pick up a camera now, I, you know, that's the question. What What's the story? Uh, because I'm wasting my time if I don't tell the story. Of course, and Very you know true. what? I think um, when you when you talk about stories, it's like that's that's something that we do definitely when it comes down to the bigger projects where we actually are being paid for the. How do I put this? I don't want to sound like an ass saying this, but where we where we're actually paid for the time that we're that it takes to actually do the job right, rather than getting the piecemeal. Hey, I just want real estate photos, which, you know, I think for for us, what we've done is we we've, we've packaged it out, we've standardized it to the point where it is, it's almost like working in a factory where we can uh, uh, produce great looking photos consistently uh, uh, over and over and over again. And I can send one guy or I can send another guy or I can send, uh, you know, I can send any of, any of my staff out to do these and they'll always come out looking the same. And that's, I, I like the fact that we can do that from the real, for the realtors there. But when it comes down to, of course, the, um, uh, uh for the bigger projects where it's like we're shooting show homes or community shots for a new uh area development that's when yeah you definitely have to look at it and say well what's the story who are we targeting what's the message that's gonna really connect with them right okay. absolutely uh, yeah. hey ron Sir, yeah Ron, I've got to uh, go barbecue. So yeah, uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for thanks for sticking around. That was actually thank really you very cool. much. That was I, cool how I, it worked out because he just kind of popped in and it made it a whole. We've been talking for an hour. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah thank you for the advice from the three of you. It's uh, very nice. Thank you very you're, much. You're, you're most welcome, welcome, man. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Welcome and board, Jeff. Uh, stay safe and healthy. Okay. You too, you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Bye -bye. that. You too. Take right. care. Yeah. Hey, now, was, actually, uh, getting back to video. Have you guys uh, have you guys started playing around with um, with video with the new uh, iPhone? You know, not uh, yeah. I I'm picking up all kinds of B-roll. I don't know what I'm going to use this stuff for, but I am stacking up my iPhotos I, thing I've, with with video clips of all kinds of things from golf to to water puddles to like whatever it may be. Kind of, but it's making a lot. Yeah, we have the 11 Pro. Yeah. So we got so we've yeah. been doing this where we got this the, the DJI. Osmo Mobile. Okay, good. And this phone, put them together. Perfect. And oh my God, I go onto our website. We've got some sample sample videos of videos that we've done for realtors and builder spec homes using that setup. Yeah, I can see it's that. It's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah that's that's uh, that's all you need, man. That's great. It's it's ridiculous. We're we can be uh, we can shoot a place uh, in around twenty minutes, process it in around forty and we can process it all on an iphone and so what, we, what we've been doing is we've been doing these iphone videos but at the same time we've been uh telling our realtor clients like hey we can actually teach you how to do this because here's the thing with social media right now 
everybody's on social media and everybody's getting more and more involved on it. But realtors and actually most businesses can't afford to keep up the amount of content and volume that is necessary to keep a professional looking uh, social media site like the big, big companies can. And so the only way that you can compete is to be able to shoot your own stuff. And so we've started doing this where we're trying to teach people, hey, this is how you shoot video using your iPhone and a small gimbal. And uh, when you can't do it, we'll come and shoot it for you kind of thing. And it's, uh, it's working out really well. More no, that's Rota fabulous. Aikido. More <laughs> keto. Yeah. Hey, there was a comment I thought we could bring it back to a pricing discussion that I think is important. Mm -hmm. Is uh, he was uh, Wade is mentioning that he had he's waiting a while to get paid, and I think that's uh, one of the one of the things with real estate photography, mm -hmm. with all with the all the pros and cons with every kind of business you could ever find. There's pros and cons, and mm -hmm. there. So one of the cons is that it's not the highest paying kind of work and i frankly expect to get paid immediately <laughs> you know what there's um i, yeah. I agree get get paid right up front yeah. if you can um and, and i would, I would we, expect that for like existing clients maybe again that's part of what we were saying before is that you're getting to know each other and maybe mm -hmm. they have their process okay fine but if you say look going forward here's what we need to do <laughs> so just uh my another two cents yeah, no, we do. We do the same thing where uh, we've got an online booking platform where whenever, whenever somebody new books online, they they submit their credit card, and oh, it's of course, of course, that's yeah, it's pre-authorized so that uh, at the end, like we still do at once a month billing at the end of the month, but we've got the uh, we've got the credit card on file, so as soon as it's done, we press a button and boom, they're they're charged. So they, they don't so, exactly pay up front, but they give you the information and you, you exactly charge it. Okay. Yeah, we do have a couple of clients that are more net net thirty, net sixty. But those are clients that where you know they're doing twelve to twenty listings a month. So we give them a little slack on that. That's mm -hmm. and I think that's perfectly understandable. Yeah. They've got a bigger accounting process than uh, no question than, yeah. than the average realtor does. And of course, you know what? There's always the the case by case. And uh, during these times of COVID, we we've, we've had realtors come up to us and like, okay, I've got six new listings but i can't pay you until like june is that okay and i look at them and think yeah you know what we're here to help sure that's fine yeah. and i talk to my staff i'm like look this is this is what's happening with, with this client here uh let's see what else let's see what we can do to just help them out because they're suffering and uh you know what it's when people are down that's when you you rise to the occasion and help out more <laughs> my favorite lenses okay uh so uh let me go uh, let me uh, let me preface this my favorite are not the ones that i use um and here's why uh the lenses that we use for real estate photography we've got three of them and we have a uh, sigma 12 to 24 and that goes onto a full frame sensor so we need the 12 millimeter mil because we, when we shoot say a powder room and we needed to shoot it not in landscape, not in portrait mode, but in landscape mode because everything on MLS is in landscape. We need that 12 mil to shoot that bathroom, uh, and so you can still see everything top and bottom. Now, uh, that is uh, the widest that we go. The next one that we have is a 16 to 35, which is our standard go-to lens for all of our properties. Then we have the 24 to 240. And that's on Canon, and uh, that is on a Can uh, Canon R, the R series, the Canon RP, which is a fantastic little mirrorless version of the Canon stuff, and it's uh, it's it's good. Um, but RP. those are what we use for general real estate. Now, in terms of my favorite lenses, uh, I love sh you know what I still love shooting with Fuji, and my favorite lens to this day right now is a Fuji fifty. 56 1.2 mil and that is just a dreamy lens yeah that's a that's a rare one that you're not going to see very yeah. often yeah. i got a I got a pop-up frankly i don't know where the message is coming from somebody said how do i join and uh <laughs> the first comment has the link it starts with Streamyard. click on that and it'll take you through it just asks you to share your mic and camera but the first comment, yeah. first comment, first comment. Um, now, realistically, people are asking about lenses, Rob. 
they want mm -hmm. to get into it, they don't, they're probably going to get one. <laughs> if you're going to get yeah. one, uh, yeah. you're probably going to want to get the most affordable one. And if you're on a Canon system, uh, I don't really know Nikon, so I can't talk about Nikon. I'll do. I'll take uh, that next. Okay, so on a Canon system, I would say right now the best that you could probably get is get into something like a. Uh, you know what? I would say get a used five uh, D Mark III or a, a used six D. Uh, they're on the market. They're super super cheap right now on Kijiji and stuff. And they get a seventeen to forty mil. And that's a that's a great lens for all round. You can use that where you shoot inside, you can shoot outside, and you you can't go wrong with that. So, just Canon, those Canon two. Canon also has that that ten to twenty. That uh, uh, yeah, the ten to twenty on a crop sensor. So I, geez, I haven't looked at crop sensors for for ages now. Is that, a, uh, is that on a yeah? The, yeah I I like the uh, Sigma ten to uh, twenty. That that's that's a four hundred and twenty dollar lens. Mm -hmm. Sigma ten to twenty f four. You don't need a you don't need a you don't need anything more open than f4 at that no, at that at, at, at that width you're going to be on a tripod you're going to be it doesn't matter you don't need it so don't let it that sucker you into paying more money for yeah, something that, you yeah, don't need um so um <clears throat> yeah definitely sorry to interrupt but yeah yeah and i shoot i shoot uh I, I shoot sony myself and i use the 16 to 35 that's my workhorse yeah. for you yeah. know and it's i don't know if you can see that but it is ultra beat up yeah. but it's yeah. um you know and then a, and at a 28 mil you know i'll use a 28 mil on a uh on a you know and I, I, that stays fixed on that camera as long as you shoot it straight um it look great that's every, a nikon every that's system. a nikor lens so you know it's fixed wide open i don't have an i don't have an adapter on here like a metabones that gives me you know pass through connectivity with the electronics so it's fixed wide open so it's not really my real estate lens but it's wide enough and i always like to shoot uh wide angle anyway so sorry yeah. to interrupt ron every, go ahead man. well every every system has has a lens that's going to be you need unless you have only really big properties i come from san francisco where i was shooting a lot of condos <laughs> very small spaces yeah. but you need one, something wide. So 10, 12, 14, 14 are probably the longest. You need something in that area. And then you also need something up to 35 or so for exteriors maybe, but mm -hmm. just as very general, right? So yeah. the thing to do is, especially if you're starting, so I have, I mean, I've been doing this for a while. I have the Nikon Holy Trinity. So I have all the focal lengths with very good quality lenses that I need. Same thing with, I have an Olympus setup. And everyone who has every kind of setup, they're going to have options of inexpensive lenses that are very much more than good enough. Very good. You, so um, I think Mark brought up, if you don't, you don't have to look for the f 2.8 or 1.2 lenses, get that f4 or more lens because those are going to be a lot less expensive and you never need wide open apertures anyway. Now those ones that have the wider apertures just tend to be the top glass. Yes. Yeah, right, true. But mm -hmm. that's fine. But with good post processing, you're never gonna, no one's ever gonna know the difference, especially no. if you're talking MLS. So, that's right. They yeah, won't so notice. Get your get a get a good kit lens that's wide, or maybe especially if you can have one lens that you never have to change it. That's, that's fantastic. Um, so mm -hmm. get one and then just get one good lens, and it can be on any system. Frankly, all the systems we mentioned are great, and other all ones as well. Panasonic. Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. There's um, no reason to to uh, stick with exactly one. So if you have an opportunity, like someone has lenses that you can use, a family member, a friend, just go with that one, and you you'll be happy with any of them. Believe me. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh yeah. And the other thing is this. Let's face it. We, you know, you can shoot real estate with a two point eight. The thing is, uh, as your as your f stop de as your f stop, well, your aperture opens up. So you got a smaller, smaller aperture. So you got a 1.8, 1.2, or some of that. Thing is, more of the stuff in the background blurs. And I have clients who uh, they say, "Well, we want it to look artsy, like this one." And then you shoot it at say, like you know, you know, five point at a five six, and you get a little bit of the background um, blurry. They're like, "Oh, this is not a good picture. It's blurry back there." Like well, that's what you wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you well, know, uh, and so you know, shoot at I shoot. We say you shoot at f eight to around f thirteen, somewhere in, somewhere in there, depending on, on what you need for uh, the depth of field. But yeah, you're never gonna shoot anything that's yeah. less than that. You know, yeah. when I started doing real estate photography, 
um, I had a uh, friend hire me who was living elsewhere in another town and he had lived in this town and uh, he had started a, a, a real estate photography business on the side and uh, he was charging a hundred bucks a session or whatever. And he, he said, Hey, can you go shoot some properties for me? Uh, he put a thing out an ad out and I responded to it and he asked, and I told him I'm, I'm an aspiring photographer. I take my work seriously. I was really into it. And he said, okay, look, you know, I'm going to send you the camera. I think it was an RX 100, uh, which was an excellent camera for real estate photography. I mean, it had an incredible range, but, um, and just use the pop flash. He said, use the pop flash, uh -huh. but he said, we're not, we're not taking, he said, <laughs> he said, we're not taking fixture images. We're not taking like cut sheet images for, for fixtures and appliances. Uh, they're not selling the home really. So you don't need any of that stuff. And and again, we're talking about normal MLS here. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would, my first shoot, I had, I had a ton of like shallow depth of field with my F2.8, you know, my 24 to 70, I would get a shallow depth of field of like some fixture or something. And he, he immediately said, yeah, we don't need any of that stuff. Yeah, and, exactly. uh, and again, if you're going to use something like photomatics on your software, on your images in the end, it doesn't really, uh, to me, I don't use, I don't use photomatics on images that, uh, that, uh, I might, I might, uh, layer it in very subtly, but, mm -hmm. uh, in, in a very selective location, but I'm going to try to keep, uh, my tone mapping out of, uh, out of my, uh, bokeh, my out of focus areas for the oh. most part. So, hey, you know what, let's, uh, uh, Christine's, uh, come up with a couple of great questions here. That I think that we should address. Yeah, the first question. one that she said was, uh, uh, do you charge extra for video? Yes. Always charge for your time. Your time is worth money. You are worth money. Don't ever give that away. Do you do it kind of um, modularly? Like if uh, so, you want A and B, then that's it? Yeah. So for what we would do is we would look at it and say, we go off it as uh, how, how do you calculate the time? And so, for example, if we already know that our pricing structure is based on the half an hour of driving in, half an hour of driving out, and half an hour setting up, half an hour shooting, we already know that we're committed for an hour and a half there. If we know that we're going to do a video and we say, okay, a video is going to take half an hour to shoot, then we tack that on. We don't need to tack on the extra 30 minutes and 30 minutes for the drive time. So we can get a bit, we can give a discount based on the fact that we're not driving there, but it has to be communicated to the client that yes, it all has to be done in one shot or else I'm going to charge you for that drive time again. Right. And so that's how we would do it. So it's like as an add on, it's this, so that's why the bundled packages can work uh, so well, where it's like, okay, if I do the virtual tour and the video and the photos and it's all just one guy that's doing it, then yeah, here's the bundled package. Yeah, and, the, and the next question that comes in to me is, Mark, what if we do like all of them in the same day? And you're like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you have that, to do that, But that's day. your day rate? Okay, I want you yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we do, yeah. You know, I can want we, you to go shoot four hotels in one day. I bet yeah, I, I, a lot of these realtors, you know, that I've worked with uh, in my town weren't familiar with the quality that was available to them on a regular. Uh, they, they weren't, they aren't in tune with this kind of stuff like, like we might be or something as mm -hmm. photographers, but. But uh, I went in and sat down with them, you know, I go in and sit down with them at the conference table and show them the, yeah, show them the, uh, the, uh, you know, the possibilities. And uh, I've even had them say, hey, you know, can I just hire you? Can you just work for me? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, no, I would. Thank you. I appreciate the, the, uh, the sentiment, but, you know, yeah. You know what? But, but, and, and when it comes to pricing, to answer that question just really quickly, I'm sorry to step on you, is I really do try. It, it's I don't know if it's just in my nature or what, but I really try to find out what they're comfortable with. Because a lot of this video stuff is new terrain to them, and 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 it, and it just adds up to another investment they have to make for a property that they hope sells. Mm -hmm. So, uh, will the video really help sell the product, or is it just another piece of cash that they're throwing into the wind, hoping that it'll help? You know, so if I can genuinely, and and, and usually it's like you said earlier, Rob, it's about relationships, and if once if they get comfortable with you as a person, and they know that you're just going to take care of them. You're not going to mess with your price. You're going to do whatever it takes to get them what they need on time oh, and quickly. Yeah, and I did, and I and I and I, I turn over as quickly as I possibly can. You know, so you know. Sorry, Rob. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Sorry. No. So the, I was going to say um, with the video stuff and virtual tour stuff. So 
You're absolutely right. right. You got to understand what they, um, what the client is doing and what uh, they're looking for. But the other thing is this: sometimes it's not about will it sell the place. Sometimes it's more about will it get the client. So if you've got a realtor that's like, oh, I don't know if I should do video or if I should do a virtual tour, and it used to be before COVID, I used to say that you know what, virtual tours are not necessarily going to sell your place, but what it might do is it might secure the listing. Nowadays, we say, uh, yeah, you need a virtual tour because nobody's going to actually go into the homes right now. So it's a, it's a, it's a different mindset, and you got to make sure that you communicate that to your clients. And as well, with videos and virtual tours, uh, we've been talking with a lot of our clients and saying, hey, uh, you should or should not use video or virtual tours for this one because uh, virtual tours are great for uh, a demographic that is younger more uh, tech savvy. So, you know, if I go up to uh, a realtor and they're like, oh yeah, we're trying to sell this uh, uh, apartment uh, apartment style place in a senior's residence, guess what? A virtual tour is not gonna work unless you're catering to the kids that are buying it for their, their parents. How are, you uh, defining, how are you defining virtual tour? Oh, uh, like a Matterport or an iGuide. Okay. Yes. Um, so, three, not as so, a, so 360s with uh, in 3D, not, not a slideshow. Right? No, not a slideshow. Not a slideshow. Uh, this is an interactive 360 where you get to look all the way around on something. And with the, uh, but the other thing is when you start looking at things like um, video, video actually works better for uh, an older demographic because they can actually sit and watch and they'll take the time to look through it. Yeah. And as well, they're also very good at reading descriptions. So based on who you're targeting for to buy the place, you will start looking at it and saying, okay, what is the best medium to communicate the message to them? It's a great point. Um, and then uh, Christine's last question was, what is the contract cycle, right? Or something to that effect, right? Where, um, I forget what she said there, but essentially I think the question was, how do you go through a contract with a client? And my recommendation is you do it once, You talk, uh, uh, depending on who it is, if it's a smaller client, so if it's just a one, uh, one job for a realtor, tell them what your rates are, tell them when you're gonna get there. I don't think you really have to worry too much about getting a full on uh, contract with them. And then um, what we do is we just write our, term, our terms actually onto the invoice where it says by paying this, you agree to the following terms, you have a 99 year, license to use these for this person and that's that uh, purpose here and and then send it off that way when you get into a larger job so for example if you're shooting show homes for a builder then yes get into a contract stipulate who owns what what the time frames are what the deposits are what the payment terms are and get all that in there yep good points yep. definitely, definitely a difference <clears throat> I'm shuffling through comments. Hey guys, we've been here an hour and a half and so oh, appreciate the time and everything. And I don't know about you guys, no but problem. I mean, we're sheltering. So, um, we should probably you know, this is giving me, uh, this is giving me an hour and a half that I get to stay away from my kids. So it's uh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Every, everybody has the, everybody has their the thing that they're right. And enough of not enough of something too much of the other. So we're, yeah. ba we're here to balance. That's right. I, I don't even know what day it is anymore. But I want to do, I want to like do another that. one of these next week and I'll have kids around. So I'm sure I'll have interruptions uh, going on, but that'll be, that's, it's okay. It's like an excuse to be different. That's one of our bathroom doors. I'm surprised we haven't had interruptions already, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, they've been, they, they've been very careful. Well, I, wanna, <laughs> so, yeah, no. I, I guess so. We just, just because we can, I mean, I, we should probably go eat and stuff. Um, <laughs> sure, thanks. man. I mean, yeah. Uh, not only you guys, but thanks. Uh, I mean, Christine and some of the other guys. And Absolutely. Some of the others, others that were um, commenting in and giving us some stuff to. Uh, Excellent questions. Yeah, exactly. Um, virtual Excellent. dinner party. It's a good name. Mm -hmm. And he's on YouTube. So we are live on YouTube. I just don't really talk about it because YouTube's kind of small. I don't, I don't really do much there, but I'm glad it's getting started. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody, if you, if you, uh, you guys and everybody that's listening, commenting, um, if you want us to do some more of these, send us some questions. I'll just put it together on the fly. These things are live, but they stay on the page so you can see them later. 
we can answer questions on the fly. Absolutely, can... man. Do some uh, processing tips, do some quick, sh- you know, screen yeah. shares and like, you know, different, uh, how different people approach different things and just simple, you know, workflow yeah. variations was, and differences. And, uh, you know, about doing, uh, doing like just live shooting. So I just need to figure out, I need to figure out how to <laughs> wow. get, get like a iPhone looking at me so that I can, uh, I won't be able to check <laughs> comments or whatever, but honestly, maybe, you know what? Let's get yeah. a, let's get a couple of, um, let's do it and just get a, actually, geez, I wish I had to show him that I could use here. Um, we, yeah, I could too. stream it with a 360, uh, 360 theta and then yeah. you can do a live stream of 360. So you can see when I'm shooting and you can see, look around, see the camera and, uh, see me and ultra wide angle, which yeah, you know, see you guys, it. man, you, you guys are offering a whole different level of service there with the 360 thing. I've, I've never even ventured into that world. You know, I don't do a lot of panoramic shooting. I mean, I have some panoramic stuff that I did for landscaping for landscape for my own, for my, uh, for my own landscape portfolio and stuff, but nothing for, for uh, real estate. And I'm sure that's uh, an area that I, uh, that I missed out on greatly. I remember Ron at Photoshop Photoshop World in Vegas. You had the, uh, I guess you had the Theta with you that there. Was, that was a Theta, yeah. That thing was yeah. sweet. You got some pretty killer looking shots with that thing, and they no, they all when, they, they, that was when they were still they were still kind of unknown. So I, the the breaking the ice factor of that camera was amazing. Like everybody was just mm-hmm. gaga over this camera, and all I was doing was clicking the iPhone button, and um, it got. Tons of tons that was of before time. selfies were a thing and before they were cool. Yeah. And now it was Rob, neat. Rob everybody in the jealous. whole room, you know, every, everybody, Rich Harrington, you know, Vanelli, yeah. everybody was all in the, you know, all, you know, uh, Levi. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I, I couldn't get, I couldn't get uh, Scott Bourne to stop talking about it. He's like, come here and do this. Come here and do this. And he doesn't even <laughs> like getting his picture taken. No, you got some killer ones, man, at the pinball table. That was, oh, that yeah. was great. I wasn't there that year, but that was great. I saw him. I put that, you know what I did? Uh, hold on. I put that at my, um, how do I do this? I put that on my own, per, my own Facebook page. That's the. <laughs> Is that your banner, your cover? Oh, but it's, yeah, but on the new version of Facebook, they don't have 360s. I don't know. It is the banner. Yeah. But it's, that was the year that Willis was there, man. Um, oh yeah. Um, uh, Todd Richards. <laughs> Todd, uh, Todd, Bridges, Todd, Todd, uh, Bridges. Todd Bridges. Yeah. Todd Bridges was there. We, yeah. We we're all, we we're, Having a big party at the uh, organized party at the um, pink um, the pinball hall pinball of fame machine museum, yeah. Apparently Todd Bridges lives there. He hangs hangs out there and plays all the time. That's just his, his thing. That is funny. <laughs> he's a cool guy. He was posing for all kinds of shots because so a... I guess he's friends with Pam Barry. Yeah. I mean, anyway, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I that was my take on that whole thing. You know. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, that was neat, man. Those were some great shots you were getting. I was enjoying those who, shots. Who do you think? Who do you think listening, watching, Rob? I don't know who knows who Todd Bridges is. Oh my gosh, they bet. That's a sad thing, man. We're getting old. Uh, no, unfortunately, we were just. Uh, what you talking about, Willis? Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what? For, uh, I'll, so for any photographer out there, there's uh, there's one thing, that, one piece of advice I've got for you. Uh, when you're starting out, definitely look at other people's work and Aim learn high. from it. Aim, Aim high. high. Learn from it. Once you start getting into it, you have to you have to curb yourself and you have to look at it and, and build up your confidence in your own work. Yeah. And keep doing this. You got this thing where it, it's like you aspire to be somebody. You've reached the pinnacle. Get happy with that. And then wait until you have the, the mental capacity to want to learn and aspire again. Because one of the things that happens, and I see this all the time with photographers, is they get to the point where they're aspiring, they get to a place, they plateau a little bit, they, but they still see people that are doing a whole lot better than they are. And then they start uh, doing this where it's like, I'm never going to be good enough. I'm never going to be able to do this. Why are my shots so terrible? And then they start going down and then they quit because they're, that they're discouraged from it. Don't do that. You know what? Take some time. It's like not. It's like turning off the TV and not reading the news for a bit. It's actually healthy for you. Get rid of that. Get happy with what you've got. Be try and get better based on what you've already done, and find the things that you don't like about your images and fix those. And then when you get to the point where you're really comfortable and you have that self confidence, then start looking at other people's stuff again and say, "Oh, now I want to learn how to become more like this. I really like this. I think I can get to that and aspire to go there again, but not constantly, or else you will 
burn out your self confidence. There, there's a there's uh, eras that you'll go through where you're improving, and then, then there's a time where you're going to be coasting and maybe even helping others, which makes you better. And then you're, there's that's definitely. I think I'm reached the age now, and I can look back at the body of life and say that that's how it's gone. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to say uh, thank you, Christine. I'm going to call you Christine Great White North because this is like Canada photog Canada Real Estate Photography Day. Yeah. <laughs> and then we also have John. Thanks so much for the helpful info. Portrait photographer from from Canada, Canada. again. <laughs> <laughs> Looking to get into real estate photography. You're welcome, so. John. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you if you're just like maybe people are coming in late and stuff too. Man, good good advice through here, and there are there are plenty of people offering real estate photography advice these days. So mm -hmm. I would like to, I don't know if we're closing now or not, but I would like my, maybe I want to say my, one more thing, man. Okay. Maybe I'll make it. my, my comment that maybe my last one is that <clears throat> a lot of vitriol. There's a lot of overly criticism, overly criticizing things. We touched on it during the show during this hour and a half. Now um, you're shooting for a certain purposes and certain places that they're going to be delivered and presented and seen. So we're not always going for perfection. Other times we're going for perfection. So you have to know what, what you're shooting for. So if you're out there looking, uh, participating in groups, Facebook groups or whatever, and the criticism is coming in, keep in mind that they might have a different outcome for their images. They might have a different bar, a different kind of a client. So just be ready to say, well, okay, hold on, let's slow down. And um, what I'm doing is for this purpose and they're doing this for this purpose. So I just want to um, throw that out there for everybody getting started, that people are going to come in and tell you that somebody is going to tell you that everything sucks. Somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> it depends on what you're doing. <laughs> so And anyway. it may be your client. And... And, well, you, but <laughs> if your client likes it, that's what you're doing. So you mm -hmm. don't, you don't have to shoot for that person that's criticizing. You don't even have to necessarily shoot for yourself. I think there's an argument for when you should shoot for yourself, but your client wants something, get it to them. So just, just right. be ready to keep it all in perspective. I'll, I'll right. End on that. <laughs> no, no, that's an excellent, those are excellent points, Ron. Yeah. And all I was going to say was just to uh, piggyback on, on Rob's statement about, uh, uh, you know, as, as Scott Bourne would say, you know, uh, told, you know, told me be brutal. You have to be absolutely brutal with yourself. Um, don't fall in love with your babies, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, if you want to make, if you want to get into real, if, into photography for a living, then it's all the client and what they want. You, you know, you have to be, get vision for that, get eyes for that. As Ron was, I think, trying to allude to, I mean, it's, uh, you can't even shoot for yourself in some situations. It's what do they want and getting it to them mm -hmm. uh, to the best of the ability. So getting, you know, learning how to understand what that is. Uh, the photography world is full of prima donnas. The comment sections, I don't even read them. If people put up negative comments on my stuff, I just delete it. You know, go get your own show, go get your own venue, say what you want. Yeah. But, you know, uh, anything that I try to do is to try to help other people, spread other people, share positive things, the things that might be useful to others uh, in there, in there. I know I went through a lot of pitfalls and up and I made a lot of mistakes when it came to photography. I was interested in photography. I wanted to get better as a photographer. And again, you do have to aim high. You have to be brutal with yourself. Uh, you do eventually have to get over yourself in that way. And you never really do, you know, uh, you know, you have to be comfortable with the fact that, you know, um, you might not enjoy it anymore in some situations. It might actually be a job. It's, it's, uh, not and you, always, it's not always an easy life being a photographer yeah. and you're going to have to yeah. choose the times that you're stick to your, yeah. stick to what you thought you were going to stick to. And other times, right. You're just producing something for a client. If you exactly. choose to be in that business, that's what they want. Just it's one thing to be able Nothing to shoot. Right. And one thing to be able to shoot to another thing to be able to, to, uh, to, to face the business monster that's looking at you. Uh, right. These right. guys, right. these guys up here have a better handle on that than I do. And I would deflect, you know, any anything to, in their direction on that because they have excellent advice on that. And everything Rob has said here has been spot on in terms of um, and realistic. It's very realistic in terms of uh, how to uh, approach real estate photography as a business uh, and wow. what you what you need to be aware of as you as you move into it uh, and to develop the, the thick skin that you need to uh, to be able to break through the initial 
uh, sensitivities, uh, for lack of a better term, of these things and get comfortable as a shooter, get comfortable as a business person, which is something I'm still acclimating to uh, myself. So, and I've, you know, I've been trying to do photography as a business for, you know, probably 10 years or something, 15, 10 to 10 to 15 years and uh, going through ups and downs and having successes and, and uh, you know, not it not being the consistent thing that I want it to be all the time. But again, keep, keep aiming high in terms of business, the business part of it. That's the part that we really have to understand and to not burn out. Um, it can be overwhelming. It really can. And, and uh, to uh, actually enjoy what you do, which needs to come through. I mean, you know, it takes a certain type of persona to really just, just, just deal with these things. And, and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, so it's a learning process for all of us, you know, for myself, I'm still learning how to, how to, uh, to uh, navigate uh, the business aspects of photography because I want to give my work away. I, 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 I need to sell it and I, I want to give it away. And that's a problem. It always has been. And, and, um, so I have a day job, Yeah, you know, so, uh, you yeah. know, uh, for, at the moment I go through waves and, and, uh, of course I would love to follow my passion and for it to work. We have three teenagers in our home and, you know, our, the focus can't always be on, on my, desires uh in yeah, this dad, department dad time time dad, time is not yes come first in, in that kind yeah. of situation <laughs> so yeah exactly. you know it's been it's been a you know I've, I've tried to put myself in the best you know, tried to invest for success and uh i know it's not about the gear i uh my goal has been to try to use lesser gear than my competition and outperform mm -hmm. i um i'm it's not a contest and i'm not in competition with anyone i'd rather be friends but and work together but I'm continually, I mean, we, we'd be liars if we didn't say that we weren't feeling our way through this and, and, and getting better with every little thing we learn from all kinds of photographers and how they do what they yeah. do. It's just phenomenal. It's a great thing uh, yeah, uh, right one now. One of the best parts about the business for, yeah. my, for, my, for me was always just to be involved and in learning from each other, like bringing up the shows that we both attended. I haven't been doing that over the last couple of years, and I really miss it because I— Same here. And just just yeah. having being able to call up so and so because they're the expert in something and ask some advice it just, it's just yeah. been it's an amazing thing and then i give back in my particular area of expertise and i just i just really love that and yeah hey guys we're uh we're going really long i just feel like we should um sure <laughs> should get going. See you later. Sorry, yeah. we'll get, we got to yeah. send some stuff for the uh for the next one so sounds good yeah, we'll do we'll do another one so we've decided because okay. because all the canadians have been asking in the comments that we do more so we'll do, we'll do, we'll do another right. one. Um, well done, Canadians. Yeah. Maybe we'll uh, shoot for um, Thursday or Friday this week. Uh, hey, sure, sounds there. good. But watch out yeah. for um, just a, you know, what do you put it in Facebook in the terms of Facebook? Like the page and everything, and you'll you'll see the you'll see the announcements, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I mean, and. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know how you do that in Facebook. You don't like and subscribe and click bells in Facebook, you know? I mean, I'm, I I'm, do learn, I'm, I'm learning that, you know, I'm, uh, it's, um, I'm trying to get better with, uh, I'm, I don't even, I'm not even an old fashioned, like I, I love all the technology and everything, but sorry, uh, Facebook, you're just a pain. It's just not. <laughs> No, great yeah. questions, guys, and thanks, uh, thanks for the invite, Ron, and yep. uh, good to see you, Rob, and I uh, look forward to uh, picking this up down the road, man. Thanks, yeah, Jens. I'm, uh, I'm ending broadcast. Uh, arrivederci. Take see care. you guys. Take care. Cheers.